This specific pentagram is the subject of another video, but I have it here to show you how the ridges are pentagonal to one another and oriented to the pentagram. The location of this pentagram is defined by the Great Pyramid, the Masonic International Peace Garden, and Mauna Loa, the largest volcano in both mass and volume on Earth. Extend a line exactly from the tip of Mauna Loa to the Harold E. Holt Naval Communications Station in Australia, a large-scale hexagonal array of radio towers. This station features 13 towers, the tallest of which is 387 meters, which was for many years the tallest man-made structure in the Southern Hemisphere. It passes along one half of the New Britain Trench in the Solomon Sea. You can see that this trench expresses another pentagonal relationship. Notice where the red line from Hawaii comes the pentagram's placement and size by the red line. Perhaps we shouldn't be surprised that this point is at a golden ratio relationship between Hawaii and Holt. To find another line, this time anchored at the Canberra hexagon. The other hexagon in this mix is the City Hill Park at the center of Canberra, the capital of Australia. As you might expect, this hexagon is not the only geometry showing up in the street plan. Just down the road is an irregular pentagon echoing a 5 to the hexagon 6. At the heart stands the Australian American Memorial, an octagonal metal column topped by a sphere and an eagle. Behind it are the five-sided offices of the Australian military. These six and five corners, combined with the Australian Parliament House, to make the so-called parliamentary triangle. The other end of our second line is the exact peak of Mount Everest. These lines meet at a pentagonal angle which we can set to be one apex of a regular pentagon. We map this out based on the first side being the distance between the intersection and Holt and then making all the apexes the same angle. When we do this it turns out that Uluru is very close to one of our defining circles. Uluru is sacred to Australia's Aboriginals and is a particularly potent spot in the lane line matrix that we're looking at. Uluru's importance will be covered in another video. Add in a pentagram and notice how a good portion of the south coast runs along one of the legs. Project the pentagram leg we're looking at and see that it completes a circuit to Hawaii in some sense. The pentagram extender comes within five kilometers of where the Holt line starts at the tip of Mauna Loa. Extend the bottom edge of the pentagon an equal distance to the east and then construct a hexagon in a similar way to how we constructed our pentagon. One axis of this hexagon is along a line to horizon deep, the second deepest spot on earth. The other axis happens to be on, along a line to challenger deep, the deepest spot on earth. These two deeps are also nearly at the same distance from the center of the hexagon with a difference of 105 kilometers over 4500 kilometers. Now if you pull a line from horizon deep to hold it comes within about 10 kilometers of the array. Now draw a bisector between the pentagon and the hexagon. Zooming in, we can see how the line from horizon deep to hold is exactly aligned with Uluru and Katajuta. How close the two come to the pentagon hexagon bisector and how close to our framework circle. Zooming further, we can see the alignments reflected in Katajuta's eroding bedrock. Now we'll look at how closely this geometry is aligned to the south pole by sweeping out lines anchored at the pole. You can see that the bisector of the pentagon and hexagon, the union of the five and the six, is the closest to being aligned with the south pole and is off by about 15 one hundredths of a degree. Notice how the hexagon is off the south pole alignment. Taking a closer look at Holt, we can see it is also off the south pole alignment by what looks like to, to be the same angle. The yellow hexagon shows how closely Holt is aligned to the South Pole 
compared to the hexagon we came up with from first principles. Notice how the geography of the east coast follows the hexagonal geometry. When you create a smaller hexagon and use a Luru to define its size, notice how the larger and smaller hexagons seem to define the Bass Strait between Tasmania and Australia. Now do the same, but instead with Holt defining the position, again we see continental geography following the geometry. Finally, recall that these hexagons are all aligned with Horizon Deep, the second deepest spot on Earth. Exactly what kind of naval communications are they doing, anyhow? This union of the five and the six geometries prompts me to remind you of how the urban planners who designed the parliamentary triangle in Canberra placed enough importance on five and on six for them to encode the numbers in two of the three apexes. As an aside, this esoteric encoding repeats a theme expressed elsewhere. Consider that a 5 and 6 are also encoded in the Washington Monument, the Masonic Uber Obelisk in Washington, D.C. This tallest obelisk and tallest granite structure in the world is 555.5 feet tall, which equals 6,666 inches. And its base is 55 feet per side, which is 666 inches. Back in Canberra, at the National Museum of Australia, there is a prominent sculpture called Uluru Axis because it is said to align with Uluru. Taking a look though, it's hard to tell how it aligns. A clue lies in the Wikipedia entry where it states that the ribbon symbolically integrates the site with the Canberra City Plan by Walter Burley Griffin and the spiritual heart of Indigenous Australia, Uluru. Although the ribbon does not seem to be aligned, projecting a line from Uluru through this sculpture comes to the center of Reconciliation Place. This monument is an expression of reconciliation between Australia's indigenous people and settler population. The design is dominated by a convex mound in the landscape centered on Griffin's land and water axes creating a vantage point that is a nexus from which both axes can be simultaneously and almost ethereally experienced. Griffin's land and water axes of Canberra sync up with Australia's bedrock geometry, albeit in an abstract way. Recall that the continental pentagon is defined by lines to the tallest mountain and the largest volcano on Earth, creating an unambiguous land axis if we're thinking in terms of geography. Australia's hexagon, in turn, is defined by this initial pentagon. This construction orients the hexagon precisely to the deepest and second deepest spots on Earth and places its center at a point that is nearly equidistant between the two, rather explicit water axes. Furthermore, the reconciliation mound lies along the center of the parliamentary triangle, equidistant from one of the pentagon's apexes and from the hexagon's center, creating a sink with the Uluru's position between the continental geometry. Draw the bottom edge of the parliamentary triangle with a line between the pentagon apex and the hexagon center. Now create a circle centered on the reconciliation mound tangent to this line. We see that this circle also passes through the center of the National Museum and continues on to Parliament House, drawing attention to the capstone-less pyramid expressed in the architecture. Create a vesica Pisces with a second circle through the reconciliation mound and see that it connects to both the pentagon and hexagon as well as the Australian War Memorial. This memorial anchors the end of Griffin's land axis opposite Parliament House and is widely regarded as one of the most significant memorials of its type in the world. In the next video, we'll be looking at the connection between Holt and the geometry revealed in the first video of the series about CERN, the Great Pyramid and Challenger Deep, the deepest spot on Earth, and how they lay out a geometry that shapes continents.